morning. morning. I did it again. I keep telling myself. gathering in the choir for prayer, and then I forget to turn it on as I'm walking in. Uh, and just to let you all know, uh, I was away last week to see my mother, and people keep asking me how it was. It was a great party. She was 91. I got in on Saturday, and they got a snowstorm on Sunday. <laughs> and I was going to tease them about, you know, that's nothing like a snowstorm. They're getting they broke a, a, a record that day for the largest snowfall in a, in a single day. So I guess it was a snowstorm. Uh, my older brother couldn't make it because of the storm, but we all got together later in the week and we had a great time. So, let us pray. Have you not known the God of the downtrodden, the God of Hagar and Ruth and Paul? Have you not heard the gospel of the oppressed, the story of liberation, freedom, and salvation? Yes, we have heard this story, and surely the story is in us. We know and we have heard that God is good. And all the time, God is good. Amen. And our prayer of approach. God of love, peace, and unity. We thank you for welcoming us all just as we are, for making us equal as your children from all corners of the earth, and for giving us your blessings as your children, and for making us belong. We pray that you help us realize that we are all made in your image. We need to bring peace to all your creation as one people who belong to you. We ask this Christ our brother. Amen. I'll ask you to turn to 104 in Voices United, and be, I mean, uh, more voices. And before we sing it, you will notice it's in different languages. What we're going to try today, we're going to be singing it in Swahili, English, and French. Now, I know you're all going, ugh. The Swahili is only five words, or five syllables. Mungu. A little more conviction. Mungu. Ni, me, ma. That's it. You got the whole song right there. Mungu, ni, me, moi. Oh, good. And once more. Good. All we're asking you to do is make the effort. Are we ready? I have only two announcements to share with you that aren't in your announcements. Uh, UCW will be meeting Wednesday at 10. I remember. <laughs> the other came in too late to get into the bulletin. On February 19th, there will be a meeting at the Civic Building to discuss the Cemetery Expansion Master Plan. Uh, we're invited to come as a community because we're a community of faith and are concerned about cemeteries. 
I will not be in Brandon at that time, so if anybody else is interested in going, let me know and I'll give you the details. It looks like you have something. Anybody else? Come. Uh, to speak about the Christian Education Committee uh, this morning. Uh, as you may realize, week by week, we're going to be featuring each of the committees so that you can uh, make your decision as to uh, where your time and talents uh, lie and help us out. Uh, the Christian Education Committee consists of, of the chair, Candace Rose, Cheryl Battersby, Ann Evans, Shelley Finley, Amber Dixon, and Nicole Jones. The mandate of the committee is to oversee the Christian development of children, youth, and adults in our congregation. The committee is responsible for both staffing and programming, the baby fold and the Sunday school, youth activities such as vacation Bible school, overseeing the guiding programs, our church library, and Bible study. The committee has also taken on the responsibility of making the blankets for baptism, uh, purchasing fabric with funds from the birthday box. So you always wondered where that birthday box money went, didn't you? <laughs> At this time of year, each committee is actively searching for new members to join in the important work of the church. You will be hearing from other committees week by week and will have an opportunity to greet some of the committee members to ask questions and to sign up on March 1st in the Narthex. The Christian Education and all committees ask that you please prayerfully consider where your talents and time could best be used to help our church to grow. Thank you. Anyone else? Then let's take a moment of silence. You can remain seated, and I invite you to sing verses 2 and 4 in Voices United, num hymn number 445. And if there's any children or anybody else who would like to come forward, uh, please do so, and I'll share a story with you when we finish singing. Hymn 445. Good morning. How are you? Not sure. <laughs> I want to tell a story today. I think it's a true story, but I'm not sure. And it's about a little boy in school. Now, it still happens, even today, that some people get picked on because they have different colored skin or they have a different shaped nose, or their hair is kind of kinky and not straight. And they get teased a lot. And at first you might think it's okay, you get away with it, but then it keeps, you keep at it and the person that you're picking on begins to think that they're not good. They begin to think, you know, I wish I wasn't this color, I wish I had straighter hair, I wish I had a straight nose. And they forget 
that God created them out of love and that they are an image of God too. And it, they get hurt. They get hurt quite badly. So this one day, this little boy, little black boy, went to the teacher and said to the teacher, I wish I was born a different color. And the teacher asked, why? And he, he told her. And the teacher said to him, I thank God for the skin you're in. God made you the color of chocolate, of earth, and of wood. God made you with thick, curly, versatile hair. God made you with unique gifts, talents, and skills. God made you part of a story of oppression, of liberation, and of freedom. God made you in the skin you are in, just as God made me in the skin I'm in. And as the boy grew up and every time people picked on him for whatever reason, he just remembered what his teacher said. And that's true for each and every one of us, including you. We are unique. Nobody is like us. And God made us the way we are. And when God made things, God always said, it's good. So we are good. Let us pray. Holy God, help us to see all of our siblings in Christ as beautiful and loved. Help us to celebrate each other and to love each other and ourselves fully. Amen. Let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. And our confession, the gospel is for all people. Sometimes we proclaim our own version of the story, a version that excludes those who challenge our comfortable understandings, a vision that does not remind us of our complacency with forms of human oppression. Forgive us when we celebrate an end result without remembering the long and difficult journey. Amen. Although many have tried, God's glory cannot be hidden. God's glory is wild and everlasting. It cannot be tamed to suit our prejudices or beliefs.
Psalm 147, God Heals the Brokenhearted. How good it is to sing praises to God. In the presence of God the Most High. You are building Jerusalem, O God, and gathering the scattered exiles of Israel. You are healing the brokenhearted and binding up their wounds. You count the number of stars and call them by their names. Great are you, O God, and mighty is your power. Yes, and your wisdom is infinite. You raise up the lowly and bring down the wicked to dust. Sing to God in thanksgiving. Make music on the harp to our God. Who covers the sky with clouds, who prepares rain for the earth, who makes the hills green with grass. You give the cattle their food and to the young ravens when they cry. You set no store by the power of the horse, nor by the strength of the warrior's size. But you delight in, your delight is in those who revere you, in those who rely on your mercy. Sing to God in great thanksgiving. Reading from Isaiah 40, verses 21 to 31. Those who wait upon God renew their own strength. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretch us out the heavens like a curtain, who spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them and they wither and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Reading from 1 Corinthians, or Corinthians 9, verses 16 to 23, all things to all people. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me, if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am trusted with a commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I, have, I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became a Jew, as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. Though I am not free from God's law, but I am under, God, uh, under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. Reading now from Mark, verses 29 to 39, Simon's mother-in-law. 
As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Here is wisdom for all our lives. May we hear it and live it. There's an old African proverb with different variations throughout the continent. It goes, until the lions start writing down their stories, the hunters will always be glorified. In other words, if the oppressed are not given the opportunity to tell their story, our history will focus on the oppressor. History is almost always the story of the hunter, the oppressor. The story is his. We're forced to rely on the hunter's words because we don't know what happened to the lion in the jungle. Last week, when Chris and Sheila did the service, you heard an Aboriginal story because February is Aboriginal Storytelling Month. It's also Black History Month. They're both are ways of helping us to get a fuller picture and a fuller understanding about the whole people of God. A people that includes both the hunter and the lion. Black History Month was started by an African-American man named Carter Woodson in 1926. Back then, it was called Negro History Week. And it celebrated the second week of February to honor the birthdays of the two people who worked hardest for African Americans, Abraham Lincoln, the white president who freed the slaves, and Frederick Douglass, the first American, African American vice president nominee. Some people think it's not fair to set a whole side a month for black history. It's part of Canadian history. Why does it get special status? Because if you were like me, in the history courses I took, I heard the story of the hunter. I didn't hear much about First Nations or black people. And often what I heard wasn't really fair. So this is a chance for us to think about ourselves as Christians and celebrate the history of all God's people. Just for some fun. This is, I'm going to ask you a question and you've got a 50% chance of getting it right. And if you don't get it right, this is why it's called lifelong learning. Was the first recorded black person to set foot in Canada a slave or a free man? It's believed that in 1604, Matthew de Gosta arrived with the French explorers Pierre de Gay du Mont and Samuel de Champlain. De Gosta was a free man working as an interpreter, providing a link with the Mi'kmaq people that the Europeans encountered. The first known slave was Olivier Lejeune, who arrived in 1628. He was brought to Canada from Africa as a young child and given the name of one of his owners, a priest. You might get this one. 
It's a little trickier. When was slavery abolished in Canada? Take a decade. <laughs> slavery started in 1628, and it was abolished in Upper Canada in 1793, and throughout the entire British Empire in 1833. From 1800 to 1865, approximately 20,000 blacks found their way into Canada through the Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman was one of the most famous conductors of the Underground Railroad, and she spirited several hundred fugitive slaves into Canada. Despite a reward for her, dead or alive, her reward back in 1865 was $40,000. Yeah. That would be close, I don't know how, what the figures would be, but back then, that was an enormous amount of money. They were terrified of a woman who brought freedom. Who was the first black moderator of the United Church? I think I heard somebody say it. Wilbur Howard, 1974 to 1977. In December of 1995, the Parliament of Canada officially recognized February's Black History Month, following a motion introduced by the first African-Canadian woman elected to Parliament, Jean-Augustine, PC MP from Etbicot Lakeshore in Ontario and Parliamentary Secretary to the Prime Minister. The motion was carried unanimously. If you're interested, I put in the back there a couple of, next to the question box, there's a couple of uh, pages of the chronological history of black history of Canada. Doing the theological reflection is always interesting. A couple of years ago, when I was looking at black history and looking at the readings, I got one of those aha moments. And so the scripture, the reflection I'm going to share with you is looking at those readings, any reading, remembering that the Bible is read by both the hunter and the lion. It shows the power of the Bible and the power of the Spirit. So let's imagine that you are a good Christian in the early 1800s and you have slaves. I'm painting the picture kind of broadly because not all slave owners were the same. Some did treat the slaves as if they were animals. Some taught, raised them as if they were little children. And some taught, raised them as human beings. But as a good Christian slave owner, one of the things you should be doing is teaching them the Bible. Paul in Corinthians tells us our job is to bring the good news. Jesus said, too, he had to go out and tell the people the story. You, as a good Christian, need to be telling the story because you want those pagan black people to become good Christians. And so you or somebody you hire or the local priest, somebody will be telling them the stories. They'll be hearing the stories of the Psalms, of God's love and power, a God who parts the sea and gets water from the rocks. You'd be telling them about Jesus who healed the sick and rose people from the dead. You'd be telling them about Jesus' birth and the promise of peace to all men. And back then it was men. Now eventually... You did a good job because the slaves heard the story and were converted. But as the years go on and they hear the stories again and again and hear other stories that come from Scripture, something happens. The Spirit moves in them and in some of the owners. You're telling me 
stories about Jesus and Moses and the prophets. Those stories are from Africa and Asia, not Europe and North America. I know the land. You've never been there. And Moses freed the people from slavery. So why am I enslaved now? And Paul, yes, Paul did send the slave back to the owner. But Paul said to treat the slave as a brother because both were baptized. So why do you treat me as less? Slave owners want to keep slaves and try to tell them that you just don't understand Scripture yet. Jesus' message is for those who were like him, not those who are of the wrong race and color. Remember the other story, there's only so much food to go around, and we will not give God's blessing by taking it away from our children. And the slave might reply, but even the dog got the crumbs from the table. Finish the story. Now the spirit broods. And some owners and some slaves, they begin to challenge the interpretation of Scripture. The converted slaves have received good news. They are loved by God and saved by Jesus in whom there is no free or slave. And the spirit grows, and so do the challenges. In the midst of the struggle for liberation, in the midst of blacks being maimed and killed and lynched, many ask, is God with us or not? Then comes freedom and joy and struggles to overcome racism and live true equality. We aren't there yet. But our church is working on it through the intercultural ministries and our efforts to be an intercultural church. It's easy to see the good news for the lions. Their story finally gets told, if not replaced, by the hunters. At least it's alongside the story. The danger is that now, once freed, lions may become hunters, oppressing others in order to keep their place at the table. But where's the good news for the hunter? Slave owners lose their slaves and their property and their wealth. Those of us from other minorities fear losing power and influence if we open the circle too wide. One hopes that the hunters would see that God's love is unlimited. That we don't lose any of God's love by sharing it. It's the opposite. We're strengthened by it. The good news is that we have a potential for a stronger community, a deeper faith. We have a chance to see God in other people and in other places. The good news isn't about getting wealth and gold and power, but about widening the circle of where we see and understand God. We get new images, new insights, new challenges. And our faith should be stronger and deeper than ever when we share God's love. God bless us on our journey. I invite you to stand as you are able and join in singing hymn number 268.
for it. Good morning. And no, I'm not Kathy Ward. <laughs> I'm Todd Ward, the other half. Not necessarily the better half. So. Uh, today's Minute for Mission story is called Sean's Story. Sean grew up in a life of drugs, alcohol, and violence. When he ended up on the streets of Victoria, he wasn't alone. His dad was there to show him the ropes. My dad was a long-standing member of the Victoria Street community, says Sean, at age 32. He drank everything. He drank rubbing alcohol. It's super cheap and has a high alcohol content. His dad introduced Sean to Our Place, a low barrier mission that offers a, res a respite from the street. Together, father and son made a plan to get sober, but dad died on the stairs behind the Empress Hotel. He had a heart attack and an alcoholic seizure. He was 47 years old. Confronted by his father's death, Sean had a tough time honoring his promise to turn his life around. But then an outreach worker at our place convinced him to go into treatment. After three months, Sean moved to a recovery house and joined Narcotics Anonymous. He returned to our place and volunteered to give back by doing custodial work, which led to full-time employment. There was lots of support there, he says. People noticed I had changed. Our place also encouraged Sean to apply for funding to learn a trade. It was hard, but he successfully completed a metal fabrication certification and now works full-time for a major aircraft construction company in Victoria. Sean had the willingness to do whatever he had to do to change, says Bob, the building manager at our place. That saved him. We just gave him the platform to recover. Please join me and give generously for mission and service. Together we are helping people and changing lives. Mighty and tender God, through our gifts for mission and service, we respond to your call to mend the world. The time has come to share what and who we are. Filled with God's spirit of strength, let us offer all that we are able in order to spread God's love and presence in the world. Our offering will now be collected.
our dedication prayer. Oh God, it is up to us to share your gospel using all the resources that you provide. It is up to us to learn our whole story as your whole people. Can we be seated? And our prayers of and for the people. Faithful God, we thank you that we are known by you, and you have called us to go into the world to do your work. We do not speak you call us to love and be loved as we do justice in your field. Help us to We come in humility, asking that you will give us courage and wisdom to become ambassadors of your peace and reconciliation. Hear us, we pray. You made us like you and called us to be unique. As you look at us, you see the same people you created in your image. Help us, we pray. Help us, Lord, that we may be able to stand up against any injustice. Hear us, we pray. Through the ecumenical prayer cycle, we pray today for Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. We ask that they and all of us know peace. We pray for those who celebrate St. Valentine's Day, February 14th. We ask that these holy days bring us all closer to peace. We pray for those who are in need, those we know and those we don't know. We ask that all who are sick in mind, body, or soul will meet someone who will be your presence to them. I invite you to stand as you are able in singing the hymn, Bridge the Gap, Men Broke in Places. The words are an insert in your bulletin.
In Uganda, there's a saying, one who sees something good must narrate it. Go then into the world. Fulfill your task as ambassadors and lead the world to justice and peace.